Welcome guys. So how you doing, hope you all are doing great. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was Super Saiyan, Naruto x Fem Goku. This is part 3. And if you want more of this then complete 100 likes on this video and check tree link for more. So let's get into video. The training had begun, and already it was a rocky start as Gakina trained Gohin in trying to become a Super Saiyan. Ace decided to train in his Nine Tails Chakra mode, and his Rinnegan and boy was it tough for him. The mode itself was like Super Saiyan for Chakra. After he trained, Ace begun his training to become an ascended Super Saiyan. He wanted this, no he needed this. Ace thrived to become the best so he could protect his family and friends. When Gohin turned Super Saiyan, Ace felt so proud of him that he was literally crying a few tears. He told Gohin and Gakina to stay in Super Saiyan all the time, to become used to it. Gakina wondered how she hadn't thought of that before, and agreed to it along with Gohin. When they got used to it, the training was super intense after that. The only thing more intense was that Ace stayed up night and day to train. The only reason Gakina and Gohin found out was when he literally collapsed into bed from Kai and Chakra exhaustion. When he got a long rest, Ace was fine. Gakina stayed up every night until he went to bed just so he could get sleep. Gohin and Gakina demanded that he rest for a couple of days. He didn't hope he didn't piss them off. Especially Gohin because he had a hidden depth of power that not even himself could understand. The last few days, however, Ace spent night and day to train. Ace, Gakina, and Gohin decided they had enough training, and they had decided to get out of the chamber. They went out and felt some of their friends' energy outside of the building. Ace felt Vegeta, Piccolo, Mr. Popo, Trunks, Jain, and Tien. Everyone had wide eyes as they stared at the three of them. Ace, Gakina, and Gohin were all Super Saiyan. Ace could feel Cell's energy and realized it was stronger. So what's going on? Ask Ace but before you talk I need something to eat. You are yeah sure, said a shocked Tien. It'll make it, Mr. Popo stated it will be out in a second. After a couple of minutes eating, they had decided to talk about what was going on. Cell had transformed into his perfect form and was really powerful. He had decided to make a game to fight all the strongest fighters and named it the Cell Games. Ace smirked and thought it was a good way to test his power. Ace got changed into his regular clothes and so did Gakina, whom changed in the bathroom. They both wanted to fight as an earthling. Gohin got clothes from Piccolo and Ace thought it suited him well. A little while ago Gakina checked Cell out and was impressed by his power. Listen Ace, I'm going in the chamber first, and then Vegeta, Jain, and Trunks were going to go next. You, Gohin, and Gakina can go after them, stated Piccolo. Ace shook his head. Nope. I'm done training for now I'm not going in there, and neither are Gakina and Gohin, said Ace. Everyone was shocked. What do you mean you're not going back in, asked Piccolo you mean, you don't need to go. No there is no point, stated Ace. But why? You do realize you can spend another day in there, explained Piccolo. It actually takes too much out of me, said Ace. Bikina nodded her head and she agreed. I get it little Kakarota admits that she's too weak to continue, laughed Vegeta. Bikina smirked. You're yeah, right. If you think that torturing your body in there is the same thing as training then go for it. I know how important it is for you to keep up with my strength level, said Gakina so you need all the time you can get. Vegeta glared at her. Oh really? Call me crazy, but you make it sound that you have become a great deal stronger than I am, stated Vegeta. Sure, in fact Ace and I are far above you, chuckled Gakina. What? yelled Vegeta. Vegeta growled, but smirked when Ace kissed her on the forehead. Jain smiled at the scene. Alright guys see ya at the tournament, said Ace Vegeta, Trunks, and Jain good luck with training and see you at home. Then Ace, Gohin, and Gakina jumped off the lookout and flew home. Gakina and Gohin stopped at Korin's, but Ace decided to just leave since there was no point. He felt Akina power up to about half strength and realized that she was just asking Korin to compare her to Cell. Ace opened a book of family memories. He looked at the pictures one by one and smiled brightly. Ace had just finished getting everything ready for his son's birthday party and made sure to get him some cool things that he liked. Ace picked up a photo of little baby Gohin and smiled. That was one of the happiest days of his life, but to be honest he was also scared. He didn't want to make the same things as his former father and didn't want his son to hate him. Ace made sure to always be there for his son unless the time called for him to be away. Ace looked at other pictures as well, like the wedding between Gakina and him. That was also one of the happiest days of his life. Ace made sure that Vegeta, Trunks, Jain, and Bulma were aware so they would attend. Krillin also decided to attend and Ace happily let him join in the fun. They each got him something that he thought he would like and in a few minutes they would return home. Ace it's time to get ready for when they show up said Bulma. Ace nodded and put the book away. He then got up and shut off the lights. When the door opened and in came Gakina and Gohin, they jumped out and turned on the lights while yelling surprise and happy birthday. 
Gohan looked so happy at the moment that he even had watery eyes. He ran and hugged Ace very tightly, and Ace hugged him back. Happy birthday my son, said Ace. Tell the brat that I said happy birthday, said Karama. Oh and Karama said happy birthday as well, stated Ace. Some people raised their eyebrows, and Ace explained to him who Karama was, and they were a bit surprised. Happy birthday brat, smirked Vegeta. Happy birthday Gohan. Smiled Bulma. Happy birthday little bro, said Trunks. Happy birthday and hope you have a good day, smirked Jine. Wow Gohan happy birthday, said Krillin. Happy birthday my boy, said Dr. Brief. Oh my, happy birthday Gohan, said Mrs. Brief. The cake sitting on the table had everyone's faces on it. Ace, Kikina, Gohan, Vegeta, Baby Trunks, Baby Jine, even Future Trunks and Jine were on the cake. Whoa. Look at the cake, it has all your faces on it. Smiled Krillin. Make a wish Gohan. Said Bulma. I think you will really like what I got you Gohan said Ace. Gohan looked towards the presents. Wow. Thanks dad. Do you think I can open my presents now dad? Asked Gohan. No not yet, cake first buddy. Blow out the candles. A said. Gohan got up and blew the candles out while making a wish. What they didn't expect was the cake to blow into their faces. Everyone laughed at that and they decided to make pasta instead. They took a couple of pictures of the party. Even of Ace, Gakina and Gohan eating pasta at the same time. They took one of Gohan opening a present with a telescope in it. They also got one of everyone laughing and it was a night to remember. A vision about a galaxy being destroyed occurs. The South Galaxy has been shattered by a Super Saiyan. Just as I feared we got to do something. Our galaxy is next. Said King Kai. OP and ING. This is only a test to see if you like it. Review if you like it or not. Opening Dragon Soul, English. Don't stop, don't stop. We're in luck now. The dragon balls fly in front of the screen. Don't stop, there's so much to be found. Shenron appears. We can find paradise. Ace raises his hands while screaming and a gold aura appears. All we have to do is go. Go. Free your soul. The blue flash appears and it fades away to show Dragon Ball Ace shipped den. Mysteries abound made of a deep energy, energy. Red lightning appears in a wasteland. Foes all around, but I will go fearless and free. Ace and the Z fighters appear and fly towards the sky. I'll give you strength, you give me love. That's how we live. That's how we live. The blue sky and lots of clouds is shown. Courage won't fade. If you're with me, my enemies can never win. Ace and Gakina are on the Nimbus and Gohan jumps, then holds onto them with one hand around Ace and Gakina. We will fight for love and glory. We will live to tell the story. Ace goes through different battle stances. There is nothing we can't live through. Gohan attacks Ace while Ace dodges and Bulma, Gakina and Vegeta are in the background. Nothing ever dies, we will rise again. Gakina and Vegeta are looking at each other on rocks, and then they jump and attack each other. Don't stop, don't stop. We're in luck now. Naruto appears and attacks an enemy ninja then Gohan appears and then slashes the camera. Don't stop, keep your spirit proud. Frieza appears and transforms into his final form. And ride upon the wind. Super Saiyan Gohan and Ace appear on top of the lookout while Ace is in his Nine Tails chakra mode. All we have to do is go. The sun rises while Gohan and Ace is still on the lookout. Don't stop, don't stop. Vegeta and 18 are seen fighting, and then Piccolo and 17 are fighting. We're in luck now. The claw soup of Ace and Gohan on the lookout is shown. Don't stop, there's so much to be found. 16 dodges Cell's tail and Trunk slashes the camera, while another close-up of Gohan and Ace is shown, but you can see Ace's blood-red eyes that are slitted. We can find paradise. Super Saiyan Ace and Cell stare at each other with smirks. All we have to do is go. Go. Ace and Cell are then attacking each other and are about even. Free your soul. The Z fighters are all shown. Dragon Soul. Ace and Gakina appear in instant transmission and smirk at the camera. Remember this was only a test to see if you guys like it. OP and ING. Why are we here again? Ace sighed for the 15th time of the day. Ace and Gakina were dressed in dress clothes and were in a line. Gohan wanted to get into a good school because he wanted to become a scholar. We are trying to get Gohan into a good school, Ace explained remember Gohan wants this. Gakina frowned. But this is not my look Ace and I really wanted to go to that picnic that Gohan and the others went to. Gakina complained. Ace turned to glare at her with blood-red slitted eyes, and Gakina and everyone behind her felt afraid. Stop complaining. After all that training we did, Gohan deserves a chance to be happy. This is for him. Ace yelled remember Gohan's dream is to become a great scholar and a great fighter. Okay geez. Calm down. Said Gakina. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Everyone is laughing as Master Rashi is doing a show for the gang. 
This is what happens when you hide his magazine said Bulma while sitting on a blanket and playing with giant and trunks. Bohin laughed as Master Rashi continued his show. Awesome. You gotta teach me how to do that. Laughed Gohan. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Okay it looks like there is only a couple more parents in front of us, and then it's our turn, Gakina said Ace. Ace turned around to see Gakina holding her stomach. Ace. I'm really hungry groaned Gakina. Ace sighed and face palmed. You're always hungry babe sighed Ace okay, so let's try this again what are your favorite hobbies? Gakina looked up to Ace and smiled. I'm supposed to say reading and sports right? Asked Gakina. Ace nodded and smiled. Yay. Good job. Said Ace so can you tell me a few of your favorite words? Akina scratched the back of her head. Favorite words? I can't think of any words that I like, but I can name thousands of the foods you and I like. Smiled Gakina who drooled at the thought of food. Ace smile dropped. Say friendship and victory and you should be fine said Ace. Akina looked like she caught on to something and leaned in to whisper in his ear. Oh I see. This interview is some sort of lying contest isn't it whispered Gakina. Ace face palmed again. Why? Ace wondered. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Krillin was singing a song and it sounded so terrible. Only a couple of people actually thought it was good. He stopped when he saw a huge ship land. Krillin then shrugged and continued to sing. Aliens came out of the ship and kneeled. What is the meaning of this? Asked the princess of all Saiyans, Vegeta. The man with a scar over his one eye came out of the ship and kneeled. At last. We found you Princess Vegeta, said the man. Vegeta then smirked at the man. You're a Saiyan aren't you? Asked Vegeta. Yes said the man I am Paragus. Krillin stopped his song and looked around in confusion. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Bohin has always hoped to become a scholar, so we tried to make our house a healthy environment for him, filled with a positive environment and healthy learning, said Ace. Akina, Ace. Can you hear me? Spoke King Kai. Hey King Kai. Thought Ace wats up. Hey King Kai. How's it going thought Akina. Akina and Ace. I need to see you right away. It's an emergency said King Kai. No way. We can't. Thought Ace. We're stuck in a very important interview, plus if I don't answer the questions right then I won't get desert and Ace won't train with me thought Ace. They'll cook for you guys. Just get here. Look, the earth is in trouble. Something terrible has happened and the whole galaxy could be destroyed spoke King Kai. Ace was shocked and then got a serious look. Is there any way we could reschedule this interview? Ace asked. I'm sorry, but we cannot said the interviewer. Ace sighed and then stood up. That's a shame said Ace as he grabbed Gakina's shoulder and used instant transmission to teleport to King Kai. The interviewer were shocked and their jaws dropped. Are they magicians? Screamed the interviewer. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. King Kai and Bubbles were sitting at a table when Ace appeared on the table with Gakina in his lap. Bubbles and King Kai were shocked at the sudden appearance. Oh. Gakina and Ace. That was quick. Said King Kai why are you two dressed up? Ace jumped out of his dress clothes to show his regular clothes underneath. Gakina ran into the house and quickly changed and then came back out with her regular turtle hermit guy. Gakina gave her dress to Ace who picked up his dress clothes and sealed them into a scroll. Ace put the scroll in his pocket and turned to King Kai. Ah that's better. Smiled Gakina it's so good to be back in my regular clothes again. King Kai approached the two. Okay. Now to get down to business spoke King Kai. Ace and Gakina nodded. Yes agreed Ace. Of course, but can we eat first please? Pleaded Gakina. Ace and King Kai face palmed at her, but Ace had to agree he was hungry as well. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Meanwhile, Paragus explained to Vegeta about the new Vegeta made in her honor and how that they must stop the legendary Super Saiyan. You found the legendary Super Saiyan? Asked Vegeta. Yes she's wreaking havoc all over the South Galaxy explained Paragus at her current pace, even the new planet Vegeta will be destroyed. Vegeta thought about it for a minute when Jain came up. Mother. You won't fall for such a story right? Questioned Jain. Vegeta looked at her before turning to Paragus. Paragus lead the way said Vegeta. Mother screamed Jain listen to me. Paragus stepped in front of her as Vegeta walked towards the ship. Of course you can come along Princess Jain stated Paragus you are Vegeta's daughter and of royal blood. The ship was about to take off when Master Rashi, Wulong, Krillin, and Gohin went for the ride. The queen of her own planet. Yeah that's just what she needs said a sarcastic Bulma. Mom. Jain and I will bring Vegeta back. Said Trunks. Trunks and Jain flew in the spaceship and then the ship took off. Good luck son said Bulma. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace and Gakina ate and devoured the food at a fast rate. Ace was in the middle of some rice when he spoke to the Kai. So there is a Super Saiyan in the South Galaxy? Asked Ace. Then Kai looked at the huge stacks of plates and bowls. 
Actually she tore through most of the South Galaxy, and it appears she is coming towards the North next, that's our galaxy you know stated King Kai. Ace nodded. And what I'm afraid of Ace, is that she might be stronger than you and Gakina said King Kai. Ace looked shocked, and Gakina had stars in her eyes. Really that's so amazing. Yelled Gakina. Actually this is in the bad thing category Gakina King Kai explained. Ace and Gakina got up and stretched a little. So where do we go to find her? Asked Ace. I'm not sure replied the Kai. Ace and Gakina frowned. Hey I thought you Kais were supposed to know everything, stated Gakina. It depends on my mood said King Kai all I know is that she is in the South Galaxy, just use your instant transmission. Yay. Then we can search for his energy. Ace put two fingers onto his forehead and started to search for his energy. Ace frowned and turned to King Kai. No luck maybe if I knew which way was south stated Ace. King Kai nodded and pointed south. Ace put two fingers to his forehead and searched. His eyes widened when he found it. Found it. It's weak but it's definitely Saiyan energy. Gakina grab on. See you King Kai. Bye bubbles. Said Ace. Gakina grabbed onto his shoulder and then they vanished. Oh well let's hope he's right, said King Kai. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace and Gakina reappeared on a planet with broken buildings. We just missed her said Ace, but to leave a strong trail of energy behind her. That's unheard of. Gakina turned to Ace. Maybe King Kai really was right. This person just might be stronger than any of us said Gakina. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. The ship landed and they got to the castle. When they got out of the vehicles, the army cheered. Hail Vegeta. Yelled the army. These men were gathered from throughout the universe, they are here to serve you my queen stated Paragus. Vegeta and Paragus approached the castle to see a woman that wore unusual clothing, female Broly. This is my only daughter, Broly said Paragus she's at your service my queen. Broly has dark eyes and long spiky black hair, reaching her mid-back and short bangs framing her forehead, like Gohan's hair in the Vegeta saga in the original story. Broly also has light skin. Broly is as tall as Bulma, maybe even a little shorter. She wears a crown with a blue jewel. Broly also wears a golden necklace, boots, wristbands, and a belt that all have blue jewels like her crown, along with golden bands on her upper arms and neck. The rest of her attire consists of white pants, a red sash, and red bra. She had a perfect hergless figure. So I guess you are a Saiyan as well said Vegeta. Yes ma'am stated Broly with a closed eye smile. The warrior came running up. Your Majesty, the Super Saiyan has appeared on planet Totokama. Said the warrior. What? Alright, I'm going to take care of this freak right now. Broly come with me. Demanded Vegeta. Giant came running up. Vegeta. We need to get more intelligence before we act. It's too dangerous. Said Trunks. Vegeta turned to glare at the half Saiyan. The only danger is standing against me. Broly hurry up. Said Vegeta. Broly followed after her with a small smile on her face. No mother said Giant. Paragus chuckled a bit. The ship took off and the Oolong and Master Rashi stared at it before it left the planet's atmosphere. Meanwhile. Trunks, Jain, Gohan, and Krillin went to search the planet for clues on what is going on. Hey Trunks. Do you really think this legendary Super Saiyan really exists? It seems fishy to me stated Krillin. I agree with you Krillin, but Vegeta doesn't. That's the problem said Trunks. They flew off in saw ruins, and it had no life. No matter where you look, this place is pretty barren said Krillin. Those cities we thought we saw from space were nothing but ruins explained Trunks. Yeah. I wonder why that Paragus guy would want to build a palace in a rundown place like this Gohan said. Jain turned to see something. Hey. What's that over there? Said Jain. It was a place where they had a ton of workers. So they could deliver energy to the palace. The four landed and looked around. They saw a creature get whipped, but before anything else could happen Gohan and the others stepped in. Krillin stepped up and smirked as he punched the air. The men were frightened and ran away. Krillin kept punching until he hit Ace who appeared with Gakina in an instant transmission. Ace dropped to the ground and Gakina looked down to him and looked in worry. Daddy. Mommy. Said a shocked Gohan. Hey father. Gakina. Greeted Trunks and Jain. Ow. Said Ace as he held his head. What are you doing here Gakina? Asked Krillin. I'm not sure really. We were just following a Saiyan's energy explained Gakina what are you guys doing here? Vegeta was asked to destroy this legendary Super Saiyan, and we had some extra flyer miles to spend joked Krillin. Really? I guess King Kai talked to her as well wondered Gakina. All of a sudden a voice broke up the reunion. It was Paragus. Welcome Kakarota, or as you now prefer to be called, Gakina said Paragus. Paragus turned to Ace and immediately recognized him. The hair, the clothes, the tail were familiar. This was the one who defeated Frieza and avenged the Saiyan race. 
Paragus looked to be worried for a second as he sensed how powerful Ace was. But why was he worried? Ace pondered this question as he stared at the man. How do you know that name? I guess you're a Saiyan. Questioned Ace. Yes and you must be the one who defeated Frieza, said Paragus who turned towards Gakina, and you must be Bardock's daughter now would her guests care to have some dinner. Ace and Gakina's eyes turned to stars. Really that sounds fantastic. Shouted Ace and Gakina. Time skip. After dinner, Ace leaned against a wall next to Gakina, who sat on the windowsill, and watched Paragus's and Vegeta's conversation. Damn it. How am I supposed to destroy this thing if you can't tell me where it is? Shouted Vegeta in anger. We're working as hard as we can. Around the clock. Just give us some more time my queen. Said Paragus. Ace smirked. This was so like Vegeta. Hey Vegeta. Said Gakina. Vegeta turned to Gakina and Ace and smirked at them. Well, well, well. Look who finally showed up, said Vegeta. We were a little late. I guess the interview was longer than I thought, smirked Ace. Oh come on Vegeta. It's not like you're having any luck finding the Super Saiyan, said Gakina with a smile. Vegeta's mood turned sour after she heard that. It won't be long before we catch him and when we do she's mine and she's dead. Stay out of my way clown. Said Vegeta as she walked away. Paragus walked after her, but turned around to make sure Broly was following. His eyes widened to see her looking at the one who avenged the Saiyan race. She had a dreamy look in her eyes and a major blush on her face. Gakina turned to look at her, and she grew focused. She stepped in front of Ace so that Broly wouldn't stare at him anymore. Broly noticing the change glared at Gakina, and it looked like there was lightning between their eyes as they glared at each other. Ace grew focused as he saw Broly increase her glare. Ace saw Paragus in the corner of his eyes, who had his hand out and the light emitted from his hand. A saw Master Rashi came along and distracted everyone. Broly was able to calm down at the cost of annoying Paragus, with how Broly wasn't able to be controlled. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace and Gakina slept in the same bed and were snoring lightly. Vegeta was staying up to possible catch the legendary Super Saiyan. They hugged each other to let each other know that they were there and they were gonna protect each other. Ace and Gakina opened their eyes as they felt a power outside their room. Broly barged in and attacked Ace and Gakina. Everyone else woke up as Broly charged after Gakina and making sure Ace was out of the way. Ace followed right behind the two Saiyan women and felt Broly's power grow immensely. They were at a lake where he stopped and stared in shock. He saw her lick some blood in the corner of her mouth. Gakina shouted how gross it was and Ace said the same thing. You. That was gross at Ace. Ace widened his eyes when Broly powered up and realized that that was the energy Gakina and him were following. Paragus tried to stop Broly from her rage. Ace teleported right in front of Broly. Listen to your father. Please. Shouted Ace. Broly immediately calmed down and stared at Ace. She powered down and nodded to him. Paragus widened his eyes at this. No one could make Broly stop, not even himself could unless it took a while. Broly and Paragus soon left, and Gakina and Ace stared at each other. She's the one the legendary Super Saiyan, said Gakina. Ace nodded. Yeah, said Ace. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace was once again sleeping with Gakina and again was interrupted when the door opened. Ace woke up and gazed at the door that was just opened. Paragus stood in the doorway with a forced nervous look. You? Ace. Broly is out of control again. I need your help. Requested Paragus. Ace nodded and got up while making sure everyone was still asleep. Ace and Paragus started walking towards Broly's room. While on the way, Paragus had to hide a smirk as his plan was all coming together. They got to the room and Ace went inside, while Paragus locked the door and ran to a couple doors away to hold a video room showing the cameras to the rooms. He looked at the one with Broly and Ace in it and used his powers to control Broly and make her agitated and in pain. Ace got serious and made sure to be aware of everything that was happening. Paragus smirked as he was about to witness the death of Ace. The reason for this. Ace is one of the strongest people, besides Broly, here on the planet and is a threat to his plans. But then his eyes widened when he noticed the vulnerable look on Broly. The please see come H here requested Broly. Ace hesitated a bit but walks a bit closer to see what was wrong. His eyes widened when she pulls him towards her and into a tight hug. Ace blushed in embarrassment. W what are you doing, asked Ace. He was ignored but he then noticed that the woman was in pain. Maybe she more than being that bloodthirsty super saiyan that we saw a bit ago thought Ace. You brat. I can sense her emotions and right now she is calm and happy. She is also angry at her father for being betrayed by him said Karama. Thanks Karama Ace thought. Ace sympathized with the girl. Having been betrayed by his own family himself. Ace hugged the girl back which made her calm and fall asleep peacefully. Paragus who was watching this gritted his teeth. Paragus has made her to be a weapon for use. She's been alone all her life. 
Per Gus will pay for what he's done to her thought Ace. But Ace, having noticed the camera, looked at it. Open this door or I will blow it open and kill you threatened the Nine Tails host. Per Gus started sweating and rushed to the door and unlocked it. Ace, having set the woman on her throne where she slept peacefully, walked out. Paragus angrily marches after him and glares at him while doing so. How did you get her to calm down and be controlled? Question demanded Paragus. A said nothing and continues to walk back to his room. Paragus stops and glares at him as the man he fears will ruin his plans continue to walk down the hall. I don't know how he did that. Maybe it was luck or maybe not. But this makes me worry that Ace will be the one to stop Broly, said Paragus. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace and Gakina were in the ship and waited for Vegeta to come so they could tell her that Broly was the legendary Super Saiyan. They hear Vegeta and begin to shout for her. Paragus, Broly, and Vegeta walked up to hear them. Vegeta. Vegeta. You in here? I'm getting tired of waiting on you. Shouted Gakina. Vegeta. There's no need for you to leave because the Super Saiyan you're looking for is right here, said Ace. What do you mean? Asked Vegeta. Paragus flinched in worry as Ace and Gakina appeared and smirked at the three. Paragus growled and glared at Ace, and Ace glared right back causing Paragus to flinch and start sweating. Paragus. Tell Vegeta that Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan. Said Ace. That's preposterous. Look at her. She has less power than I do. It's pitiful. Lied Paragus let's return to your palace my queen. Father. Gakina. Vegeta. Yelled an incoming voice. Trunks flew and landed on the ground and looked at Vegeta. Don't listen to him. This so-called planet Vegeta is nothing but a fake. Just look over there. Trunks began as he pointed to a direction ruins. He didn't build this for you. Bohin, Krillin, and Jain brought some citizens to help. The citizens recognized Broly immediately and called her the legendary Super Saiyan. Vegeta glared at Paragus. You tricked me. Shouted Vegeta. Paragus smirked. It's about time your small brain figured it all out. Your family is most certainly right Vegeta, this place has no value to me. Do you want to know what I really care about? It's a little sphere in the North Galaxy called Earth. Explained Paragus a green, healthy planet. The most beautiful in the cosmos. You have no idea how long I've waited for this. Ace tuned Paragus out having enough of his annoying voice as he continued to glare. Paragus continued his speech, but Ace heard about Comet Kamori. Ace got back into the conversation as he saw Gakina put an arm around him, in which he saw Broly looked shocked and then instantly glared at Gakina. Doesn't matter said Gakina, we'll stop your evil deeds. Broly walked forward and began shouting while glaring daggers at Gakina. Pakaroda. Shouted Broly as she turned Super Saiyan. Vegeta turned Super Saiyan and kicked Broly, but it didn't have any effect on her. Ace and Gakina jumped back in worry. Let's get one thing straight. Some friends call me Kakaroda, but I'm Gakina and you aren't my friend. Shouted Gakina. Ace said nothing but got prepared for a fight. Ha 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 ha. It seems I don't have to see you die, but the comet. It seems Broly has other plans for you. Broly attack. Demanded Paragus. Vegeta charged a Kai blast and fired it at Broly, but it did nothing. Ace and Gakina watched in shock as she stared up in the sky and started shouting and gathering her power. The planet was shaking at the power and everyone was getting scared and nervous. Ace, Vegeta and Gakina stared in shock at the woman. As it seemed Broly stopped herself, Broly shouted again and transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan. Her headpiece was broke and Broly become uncontrollable. Ace's eyes widened as her power and Vegeta de-transformed and fell to the ground in fear. Broly hadn't gotten much bigger. She was as tall as Ace was now, who was about perfect Cell's height. She had her hair all spiked up and it was green. She only grew a little, and her figure was even more impressive than before. Vegeta shaked in fear and she breathed hard. She's the one. The Saiyan of legend. Said Vegeta. Broly pointed at Gakina. You Kakaroda. I choose you to be the first of my victims, and when I'm done, I will be taking Ace as my mate. Smirked legendary Broly. Ace widened his eyes in shock at this bold statement, and Gakina glared at Broly even more. Gohan jumped in front and also glared at Broly. Oh no you don't. Shouted Gohan. Broly charged and Ace pushed both Gohan and Gakina out of the way, then Ace dodged it. Broly aimed her blast at Gakina and Gohan, but they flew away from it. Gohan and Gakina flew away, but Broly blasted Gohan, and then Ace glared at her. His son or first love will not die. His family and friends were his everything. Ace teleported to Gakina, who was shielding Gohan from a blast, and took the blast to the back, and his guy caught on fire. Ace screamed, but was relieved as Gohan and Gakina put the fire out. It doesn't matter if you get hurt. It'll just not kill you and find some place to heal you. Laughed Broly. Broly then continued her rampage and changed at the three, but they all ran away from the legendary Saiyan to get some distance. 
Along the way, Trunks and Giant came and decided to help out. Broly then fired a blast and killed a lot of aliens. Broly laughed at the sight. It doesn't matter if you run, I will still destroy this planet and take A said Broly. Ace landed on the ground and glared at her. Not a chance in hell. Shouted Ace. Ace then transformed into a Super Saiyan. Kakina, Gohan, Jain, and Trunks landed on the ground and also turned Super Saiyan. Ace then decided to take it a step further and put his hands on his seal and transformed into the Nine Tails Chakra mode. Everyone, yes even Broly, was shocked at the new transformation. Ace's hair was sticking up like in his Super Saiyan form, but two tips of his hair looked were longer and looked like horns. A cloak grew on him, imagine Minato's cloak that had words on the back that said Ultimate Saiyan. Marking were all over his body, and his eyes were blood red and slitted. His teeth looked like an animal's, and he looked like his wild body was on fire. This is a combination between Super Saiyan and my Nine Tails Chakra Mode. I call it Super Saiyan Chakra Mode. Smirked Ace. His chakra increased a lot. The other smirked and turned to the legendary Super Saiyan who looked a little confused, but then she smirked. You can pull any trick you like, but you still will not win, smirked Broly. Broly charged and Ace tried to punch her, but she dodged and elbowed him in the face and then kicked Jain and Trunks away and punched Gohan and Gakina away. The four Saiyans tried to run, but the legendary Super Saiyan followed. They stopped and Broly smirked at the four. You think four on one can do any good? Do you really think you have enough power to beat me? Laughed Broly. Broly. You surprised me. You might have won the first round, but round two starts now, stated Gakina. Master Rashi, some more aliens, Krillin and Oolong fell to the ground, and Broly turned to them. Uh. Hey Krillin. Said Gohan, who was confused. What's up? And where's Master Rashi? Asked Akina. What's going on Krillin? Asked Ace. The pile of aliens collapsed to see Master Rashi. Him right here. I thought you could use some of my help so Rashi said as his muscle mass increased broccoli. Give it up. It's all over. Very tough, but her name's Broly corrected Oolong. Rashi then proceeded to do a show for everyone, and Ace sweat dropped it hit. Great. Uh, Ace I think Rashi got a little sick on the way over here said Krillin. Broly then launched a beam at the alien's home planet and was about to destroy it, but a blast destroyed Broly's. Broly turned to Ace who had his hand stretched out. This power is making her wild. She isn't her usual self. We need to defeat her and get her back to normal. Thought Ace. Krillin, get everyone out of here. I'm counting on you. Said Ace. Right. Gohan, Gakina, Trunks, Jain, Ace. Please don't do anything stupid. Requested Ace. Broly smirked and looked directly at Ace. Ace how much do you love your family? Asked Broly. Akina, Trunks, Jain, Gohan leave. Demanded Ace. They looked at him in shock. Be but father. Said Gohan, Trunks, and Jain. No Ace. Said Gakina. Go now. Shouted Ace as he stepped forward and ran at Broly. They charged at each other as the others flew off. Ace kneed Broly in the chin, but it didn't work. Ace got kicked in the air, while Broly left to deal with the others. Ace then closed his eyes. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace opened his eyes to see him in a black void. He saw visions of all his friends and family dead on the ground and Broly smirking over them. He knew that with this power her sense of reason was shattered, but it still hurt to see these things. You have the power use it. Someone shouted in Ace's voice. Ace's eyes widened as his anger boiled. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace opened his eyes and stood up. He looked up in the sky and shouted in anger at the visions he had. Arg! Shouted Ace. Lightning formed around him and little instances. His hair spiked even more, and he looked like a Jetta from Dragon Ball Z. His muscle mass increased a bit, but it didn't affect his speed. Ace had become a Super Saiyan too. Ace didn't mutter a word, but he put two fingers to his head and used instant transmission. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Ace appeared in front of Broly who was standing on a broken building pillar. The other's eyes widened at his change. His power was matching Broly's. Broly was shocked at this as well. Piccolo and Vegeta were also there. Ace disappeared and reappeared in front of Broly and punched her stomach making her kneel over in pain and hold her stomach. She looked up to the man in shock as this was the first time someone had hurt her. She growled as she uppercutted him and he got hit. Ace recovered it through a punch and she did also. The fists collided and they begun to throw even more attacks, but they kept matching blow for blow. Rasengan. Ace shouted and launched Broly away. The others smiled as hope filled them. Ace was matching her and they were even. Better dad. Shouted Gohan. Father. You can win. Shouted Trunks. Finish this father. Jain yelled. You can do it Ace yelled Gakina. Win this Ace. Shouted Piccolo. Finish this and we can go home. Vegeta screamed. Broly looked to her left and caught a glimpse of something and flew towards it. 
Ace raised an eyebrow, but followed after her. Broly appeared in front of a space pod, crushed it, then threw it at the comet. Ace widened his eyes as he heard a scream from it. That was Paragus. Ace didn't really care about Paragus because he was evil, but still it was a little shocking. Ace, himself, probably wouldn't kill his former father, but he would still hate him for life. Broly turned to Ace. Still not comfortable with losing yet? Asked Broly. I'm even with her right now, but I need to finish this. Right now, I won't be able to beat her, and the comet will destroy everything including us if this fight continues to go on. Thought Ace. Lend me your power everyone. Right now. Shouted Ace. But the O-T-H-E-R-S. They watched the fight from a distance, and when they heard Ace's shout they widened their eyes and got serious. Everyone. We must channel our energy to Ace. Shouted Piccolo. Bright said Gakina and Trunks. Okay said Jain and Gohan. B but began Vegeta only to get cut off from Gakina. Please Vegeta. Said Gakina. Vegeta growed fine. They raised their hands and channeled their energy to Ace. But they see. The planet was beginning to be destroyed by the comet. Ace and Broly gathered their power as they prepared their final attack. Ace smirked as the other's energy was added to his own. He quickly made a paper seal that could block her power and seal it away. Ace hid it in his pocket and they flew towards each other. They flew towards each other. Broly tried to punch, but Ace was faster and punched her in the face. Then he channeled his power to his left arm and punched her again in the face and knocked her out. The impact of the blow made a huge crater that went for miles, and Broly flew back and hit a mountain of rock. She turned back to normal and that's when Ace appeared next to her and put the seal on her. Making her powers gone. He picked her up and teleported to the others and grabbed them and teleported. They were stuck in a ship and it was really crowded. Why did you save her? Asked Piccolo. Yeah father why? Asked Jine. Ace was still in his Super Saiyan 2 form and smirked and put a peace sign up. I defeated her with your guy's help and put a seal on her. She can't use her powers anymore. Shouted Ace in victory. You mean like you did with me? Asked Vegeta. Yup. Said Ace. Gohan looked over to his father with a question. But father? What is this form? Asked Gohan. Can you beat Cell? Asked Gakina. Yeah. He did it right. Father increased his strength without losing speed. Said Trunks. Ace nodded. I think I can beat Cell. I call this Super Saiyan 2, said Ace. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. Bubbles shouted in happiness as he was told Ace won the battle. Ace. I'm proud of you my student said King Kai. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. After dropping the aliens off at their home planet. Everyone went back to Capsule Corporation Gohan, Trunks, and Jain took her to a room to be healed and rest. Bulma and Vegeta went after them for different reasons. Bulma to heal the Saiyan woman. Vegeta wanted to watch over her and make sure nothing happened. Gakina turned to Ace as they were still in the front yard. Ace said Gakina. Huh? What's up? Asked Ace. My hobbies are reading and sports. H-E-H-E-H-E, Gakina chuckled. Ace's face planted and fainted over sheer shock that after all that's happened, she actually tried to joke. Oh no. Screamed Gakina honey. Please wake up. Ace, I'm sorry. Come in babe. Wake up. Oh no. Began King Kai I've got to warn Ace and Gakina. The Neithers are on their way to Earth. Bubbles looked confused. The Neither race is a race that seeks to control and conquer. They can control their victims by using their mark that looks like a red teardrop with bat wings, began King Kai they can even control people like Gakina. Bubbles began making sounds of worry. I know let's hope Ace and Gakina can beat them. Stated King Kai. O-P-N-I-N-G. Opening Dragon Soul, English. Don't stop, don't stop. We're in luck now. The dragon balls fly in front of the screen. Don't stop, there's so much to be found. Shenron appears. We can find paradise. Ace raises his hands while screaming and a gold aura appears. All we have to do is go. Go. Free your soul. The blue flash appears and it fades away to show Dragon Ball Ace shipped in. Mysteries abound made of a deep energy, energy. Red lightning appears in a wasteland. Goes all around, but I will go fearless and free. Ace and the Z fighters appear and fly towards the sky. I'll give you strength, you give me love. That's how we live. That's how we live. The blue sky and lots of clouds is shown. Courage won't fade. If you're with me, my enemies can never win. Ace and Gakina are on the Nimbus and Gohan jumps, then holds onto them with one hand around Ace and Gakina. We will fight for love and glory. We will live to tell the story. Ace goes through different battle stances. There is nothing we can't live through. Gohan attacks Ace while Ace dodges and Bulma, Gakina and Vegeta are in the background. Nothing ever dies, we will rise again. Akina and Vegeta are looking at each other on rocks, and then they jump and attack each other. Don't stop, don't stop. We're in luck now. 
Naruto appears and attacks an enemy ninja then Gohan appears and then slashes the camera. Don't stop, keep your spirit proud. Frieza appears and transforms into his final form. And ride upon the wind. Super Saiyan Gohan and Ace appear on top of the lookout while Ace is in his Super Saiyan 2 form. All we have to do is go. The sun rises while Gohan and Ace is still on the lookout. Don't stop, don't stop. Vegeta and 18 are seen fighting, and then Piccolo and 17 are fighting. We're in luck now. The claw soup of Ace and Gohan on the lookout is shown. Don't stop, there's so much to be found. 16 dodges Cell's tail and trunk slashes the camera, while another close-up of Gohan and Ace is shown. We can find paradise. SSJ Ace and Cell stare at each other with smirks. All we have to do is go. Go. Ace and Cell are then attacking each other and are about even. Free your soul. The Z fighters are all shown. Dragon Soul. Ace and Gakina appear in instant transmission and smirk at the camera. OP and ING. There was still six days left until the Cell games. Broly had woke up and was back to her usual self. Everyone was still worried she might kill them, but they tried to keep it down to not let it control them. She was allowed to train, but Broly wasn't allowed to turn into her legendary state. Ace was resting because he felt good at where he was in power for now, but he did stay in his SSJ2 form to get used to it. Gohan and Trunks trained to get to the new SSJ2 level that their father achieved. Kakina and Vegeta spared five times a day to also gain the new level. Jine was the one responsible for Broly. Baby Jine and Baby Trunks were usually watched by Bulma, but when Bulma went to work either Ace or Mr. Brief or Mrs. Brief would watch them. Right now though, Ace was watching the news for anything suspicious which he did every day to make sure Cell wasn't doing anything he wasn't supposed to. After finding nothing wrong, Ace switched to the sports channel. But before he could take a look at the channel, Ace sensed a huge power level. Ace widened his eyes at the sheer power of this person, and if he was right, this person was evil and dangerous. Ace was then contacted by King Kai. Ace can you hear me? Asked King Kai. Yes I can King Kai thought Ace. Ace get here quickly. It's another emergency. Shouted the Kai in worry. Should I get Gakina? Ace asked. No, she can take care of herself for now, and we need her to defend Earth while I explain the situation to you, said King Kai. Ace looked down at himself and ran towards his room. He took a shower and quickly put on his GI. Then, Ace put two fingers and used instant transmission to get to King Kai. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. King Kai waited a few minutes and then realized Ace would probably be hungry, so he made Ace a meal. When he finished and set a table outside the house is when Ace appeared. Ace ran over to the food and sat down, but not before looking at King Kai. Thanks. Oh and you can explain the situation now. Said Ace as he nodded for him to start. King Kai nodded and watched in disgust as Ace ate the food. Seriously where do they put it all? Okay, King Kai began the neithers are an alien race that seek to control and conquer. They can control people and with their mark which is a red teardrop with bat wings. Ace nodded. And what I'm really afraid of, said King Kai is that they will control you and Gakina. Ace widened his eyes. What is possible to control him? Could he possibly use his Rinnegan to stop it? Anything else King Kai? Asked Ace. King Kai nodded. There is one more thing they are led by a Saiyan named Lord Renegade, said King Kai. Ace's jaw dropped. Another Saiyan? Screamed Ace. Yes, I'm afraid so, said King Kai. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. The ship had landed in an opening surrounded by big trees. The hatch opened and two figures emerged with an army behind them. The one was a man. He had black hair that resembled cloud strife. He wore a hoodie with the sleeves being red. He had jeans and brown boots. He had blue eyes as well. He wore an evil grin as he looked at the surroundings. Even though he looked 25 years old, in reality he was really 200. This man was known as Renegade. The one next to him was a girl. She had a smile on her face and looked genially happy. This girl looked like a female Majin. This was Renegade's younger sister. Her name is Limi. She is 19 years old. They flew up and saw a village surrounded by the big trees. This was the village hidden in the leaves, or Konoha. It's time Limi said Renegade. Bright Limi nodded but can I go around the world? I want to see its beauty since we will take over this planet. Renegade chuckled but smirked. Yes go ahead said Renegade. Renegade flew towards the hidden leaf village with the army right behind him, while Limi went in the opposite direction, who then spotted a field of flowers and went up to them. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. At the same time the ship landed, Gakina was flying through the skies with the rest of the Z fighters plus Broly, and besides Krillin and Ace, because she had sensed a very powerful power level. So what is the change that we'll beat this guy without Ace? Asked Yamcha. Piccolo responded first. Whoever this guy is, he has a very high power level, began Piccolo. Yeah hey where is Ace? Asked Yen. I don't know Vegeta. 
Have you seen him? Asked Akina. Vegeta shook her head. No, but last time I did, he was watching the television, said Vegeta. Trunks gritted his teeth in anger and fear. Damn. How are we supposed to beat this guy then? Asked Trunks. I don't know but we need to think of something, responded Jain. Yeah, we need to come up with a plan until dad arrives, stated Gohan. We don't need Ace for everything. Vegeta gritted her teeth. They continued to fly towards the evil energy while thinking a possible solution to this problem. Seen C-H-A-N-G. Krillin was trying to catch up with his friends when he noticed someone flying. He sensed the Kai of this person and noticed they were innocent and was also a girl. He flew up to her and noticed she was an alien who was picking flowers. I mean who wouldn't think she was an alien? There was nothing like her on their planet. Hey. Yelled Krillin. The girl turned around and looked at Krillin. This girl was Limi, who had decided to check around the planet to see how beautiful it is. She smiled. Hello. Who are you? Asked the girl. Krillin smiled. My name is Krillin and you are. Krillin introduced himself. My name is Limi said Limi. So what's a girl like you doing around here? Asked Krillin. I'm just looking around the world, chuckled Limi. Krillin nodded and he picked a flower and gave it to Limi who blushed. Here take this, began Krillin. Krillin then turned serious. Hey you shouldn't be around here. There are evil people here, warned Krillin. Oh okay. Bye Krillin, said Limi as she got up and flew away. I said Krillin who chuckled and waved. Krillin then got serious and then powered up and flew towards the direction of his friends. Seen C-H-A-N-G. The Kina and the rest of the Z fighters dropped down on the ground. Krillin then showed up. Hey guys. Sorry I'm late. Smirked Krillin. Don't worry Krillin. You're just on time said Gohan. They looked around to see if they could find the evil presence, but had no luck. Gakina then looked ahead to see a guy on top of the mountain with faces on it. They looked closer and saw ten people behind the two, and then behind them was an army that was not big, but not small either. People of the village. Screamed the tyrant. The people looked at him. My name is Lord Renegade and I'm here to take over your planet. Those who do not comply will be executed therefore, you should all bow down to your new ruler. Laughed the crazy renegade. No way. We will never bow down to you. Shouted a voice. The Z fighters looked to the courageous voice and found it to be none other than Naruto who had his family behind him. The village didn't notice the Z fighters' arrival. Then before they could shout out their protests to the tyrant. Ace appeared using his instant transmission on top of the Hokage Tower, looking at the Hokage Monument. Ace crossed his arms and looked directly at Renegade who raised an eyebrow. Yeah what he said. Shouted Ace you scumbags are going down. Everyone then looked at Ace. When they saw Ace, the villagers' eyes looked confused because they were sure they saw him before. Naruto shouted to his brother. Brother? Shouted Naruto. The villagers' eyes widened. This person was a son of the Hokage. The one other person was the kid they used to abuse because of the demon inside of them. Which they regretted because they learned the truth from the fourth Hokage. Naruto and the Z fighter flew to him and were right behind Ace. And I know what you are saying how can Naruto fly? Well, the simple answer is that Ace trained Naruto. I mean how else were they gonna spend time together when they didn't really know each other? Training helped that at least because they know a little about each other. Like how Naruto loves Raymond and how his goal is to beat someone called Sasuke and like how Ace loves to eat and how his goal is to beat Cell at the moment. Naruto was about the power level of Vegeta when she came to Earth. Now as Naruto was flying, the Namaka's family's eyes widened when they saw him fly. When did he do that and how? Did Ace train him? Then they thought could Naruto help them get closer to Ace. The Toad Sage and the Medic Sanin just smirked at the sight of Naruto flying though. Naruto looked up to Ace for being so powerful and having these abilities. Renegade simply raised an eyebrow and then he smirked and pointed at the Z fighters. Fill the men, said Renegade. Yes my lord. Said the army and they rushed the fighters. Ace noticed how low power they were and made a cross sign and shouted. Multi Shadow, Clone Jutsu. Screamed Ace. About a thousand Ace clones were there and everyone had their jaw dropped. Ace just pointed at the army who was stunned, but then rushed. At them, said the calm Ace. The Aces nodded, and the clones flew towards the army at speeds that none of the ninjas or the villagers could see. The clones then punched each member of the army once and then disappeared in smoke. Time stopped as Renegade's eyes widened at the sight of his men falling to the ground. All of them were defeated and killed easily. Renegade eyed the man who made clones and noticed that he had a tail. So he was a Saiyan. And out of nowhere a person appeared next to Renegade. Krillin's eyes widened when he saw that it was Limi. Limi? Yelled Krillin. Everybody turned to look at Krillin with confused looks. Limi turned to see Krillin and waved while smiling. Hi Krillin. Greeted the girl. Renegade then glared at the girl and made her flinch. They are the enemy. 
said Renegade, and you won't be conversing with them. Li Mi looked down and nodded and then glared at the Z fighters, which surprised Krillin. Renegade turned to look at the ten people behind him, his generals, and gave them a nod which was returned, and the generals vanished. The generals reappeared in front of the Z fighters, and each one pointed at them. I will fight you. Yelled the generals as they pointed to who they thought would be their victim. The fighters then vanished and started fighting. Krillin vs General ACRID. Limi watched in sadness as Krillin was having the most trouble out of the fighters. She knew Renegade was in the wrong and that they shouldn't hurt people. She also knew that Renegade would kill her if she would go against him. Krillin punched the general, Acrid, in the face, and Acrid was sent flying into a wall. Dang it. These guys are stronger than they look. Krillin thought. Krillin then raised his hand, and a thin spinning beam came forth how else would you describe it? The Structo Disc. Krillin yelled as he threw it at Acrid. Acrid stared and moved to the side but was cut a bit. Acrid growled and flew towards Krillin and kicked him the stomach and then punched Krillin in the face. Krillin was sent flying into a wall and then a beam was fired at him. Time began to slow down as the beam was aiming at Krillin's chest, but then out of nowhere the beam was reflected. Renegade's eyes widened when he noticed his own sister down there protecting the human. Leave me what are you doing? Screamed the villain. Krillin chuckled a bit from the pain and from being saved. Thanks Limi whispered the human, but Limi heard it and smiled. Limi then pointed to her brother and glared at him, which surprised Renegade because he thought she would always obey him. Limi never acted like this before, so this was a major shock to him. Renegade growled at the thought of his own sister betraying him. I'm sick of this brother. You have never been nice. And it's time I fight for what I believe in instead of following your rules. Limi screamed. But before anything could happen a beam went straight through her heart, and when she looked to the side she saw Acrid with his finger towards her. Krillin's eyes widened in shock as his friend was killed. Then he growled and forced himself up and glared at the invader who killed Limi. He then remembered his training from King Kai and concentrated. Ioken. Shouted the human warrior. Krillin's whole body turned red, and he had a red aura, and he flew towards Acrid with speed that not even Acrid could see. Crack. Acrid felt pain in his stomach and saw that Krillin and punched him. He felt he had broken ribs now, but before he could scream Krillin jumped back and cupped his hands. Pamahem began Krillin ha. Krillin launched the beam and killed Acrid. Krillin sat on the ground and took a breath. Dang that fight was hard. He then let out a few tears and sent a prayer to Limi. Bikina and Vegeta vs Spakrid in B-L-A-S-T-P-O-O-R. Spakrid smirked as he vanished, but Bikina sensed him and turned around and punched the air, and it turned out she punched Spakrid in the face. Bikina then jumped back and turned Super Saiyan. She then vanished and punched him in the face, and Spakrid flew back into a wall. While this was happening, Vegeta fired multiple blasts at Blastpur who dodged them all, but then the alien invader was sent flying when Vegeta hit him in the stomach. Vegeta then turned Super Saiyan. Vegeta. Let's combine our attacks. Demanded Gakina. What? No way. Yelled Vegeta. We need to get rid of these guys fast Vegeta. Explained Gakina. Ugh. Fine. Shouted Vegeta. Vegeta and Gakina then jumped together. Gakina cupped her hands and Vegeta stretched out her hands. Hamehameha. Final flash. Shouted Gakina Vegeta as they fired their ultimate attacks. Spakrit and Blastpur were absorbed, and when the light from the blasts cleared, there was nothing left of the aliens. Ace and Naruto vs. Borui and N-E-C-R-O-D-I-O-U-S. While Gakina, Vegeta, and Krillin finished their fights, they helped with Gohan, Piccolo, Broly, Jain, and Trunks fights. After that it was just Naruto and Ace who had to finish things off. Ace pushed Necrodius back and fired multiple beams at the alien. Necrodius knocked them all away, but then got hit in the back by Ace who used instant transmission. Naruto was using shadow clones to keep Borui distracted while he charged up a Sengen. Naruto then ran forward and slammed the ball into the alien, and Borui flew back and hit a wall. Naruto then jumped back and locked at the wall and fired a Kai blast, and the wall exploded. Naruto found nothing left and fist pumped the air. Ace finished his fight with Necrodius by using a spiral destruction wave. He didn't even need to go Super Saiyan for his fight which was saying a lot. Well, that takes care of that, said Ace. Right. Naruto nodded. They both disappeared. Seen C-H-A-N-G-E. The Z fighters reappeared on top of the Hokage Tower, some looking worse than the other, Krillin. Renegade growled as his plans were being crushed by puny people. They dare challenge the might of Renegade. You fools. You will soon know your place when you are crushed by the awesome power of Renegade. Shouted the villain. Ace then looked to his friends. Leave this to me guys. I can handle him and I haven't even got warmed up yet, A said. Okay, but be careful Gakino agreed. HMPH, whatever. Just hurry up and finish this. Vegeta demanded. 
You can do it dad. Cheered Gohan. I believe in you father, said Trunks. Just end this, we got more important things to do, like train to beat Cell, Giant explained. Win this ace. Said Krillin. HMPH, hurry this up so I can go back to training, said Piccolo. You can do this ace, I believe in you, smiled Broly. Yeah. Win this and we can relax. Said Naruto. Ace nodded and turned to face Renegade. The others then sat on the ground and rested. The fights took more out of them than they thought. Renegade's eye twitched when he noticed that only one was going to fight him. Who do they think they are? He was the strongest in the whole universe. Nothing compared to him. Somewhere in the universe, a purple cat sneezed in his sleep while muttering Super Saiyan God. Your funeral boy. Shouted Renegade, but before we begin let's see how well you can handle this. Renegade helped a hand out and fired nine blasts that were heading for Ace's friends. Ace didn't have time to protect them when they were hit. Ace sighed when he noticed that they were okay. His friend stood up and glared at him and right then and there he knew something was wrong. His friends and family never glared at him unless he did something stupid, and what was that mark on their cheeks that looked like a red teardrop with bat wings? Ace then widened his eyes when he remembered that the symbol meant that his friends were being controlled. Ha ha ha. Laughed Renegade now face your friends and loved ones. You won't be able to win. Ace closed his eye and he opened them revealing his Rinnegan and broke the spell. When he did that his friends and family dropped to the ground and the spell on them was faded. Ace saw the tattoo on their cheeks were gone. He smiled as he saw them wake up. Meanwhile, the ninjas and Namikazes were shocked to see Ace had the Rinnegan. The villagers were a bit confused but knew the Rinnegan was powerful. Arg! Shouted Renegade why do you keep getting in my way? Fine then. I will deal with you myself. Renegade got into a stance as his power began to rise and a black aura was surrounding him. Rah! The villain screamed as the transformation was now complete. Renegade let out a breath as he finished transforming. His muscles grew a bit but not that much. Renegade's hair was standing up and was neon black. Ace widened his eyes as this looked like Super Saiyan. I call this dark Super Saiyan, chuckled the villain. Ace and Renegade flew to the ground and stared at each other. The villagers were hiding behind the houses and other things as they watched the fight. The ninjas were taking notes as they stared at the glaring match. The Namikazes were paying the most attention as they watched Ace. The ground began to shake as Ace concentrated and his hair stood up more. Ace then shouted. Ha! Ace's hair turned gold and his transformed into full power Super Saiyan. Ace then looked at the dark Super Saiyan whose eyes widened at Ace's power. The villain noted their powers were matching and they were equal strength. I it's not possible and no one can match me, shivered the villain. Ace chucked sorry to say this, but you're through. The villagers, ninjas, and Namikaze's jaws dropped when they noticed Ace's transformation. H his hair turned gold. H how's that possible? Shouted Kishina. W what is this? Asked Minato. Naruko and Mito shook in fright. They witnessed the transformation, but this one was more intimidating and more powerful. They were used to it a bit though. Ace then vanished and punched Renegade, who followed up with a kick to Ace's face. They faded out of sight as no one could see them anymore. All they could hear was the sound behind their attacks. Ace then reappeared and punched the air which revealed Renegade who flew to the ground and coughed up blood, Renegade disappeared and then punched Ace in the gut. Ace bent over in pain and held his stomach. Renegade tried to blast him, but he dodged it and punched him away. They backed up a bit. At this rate nobody will win, commented Ace. You're right, but I will still kill you. Shouted Renegade. They disappeared. The Namika's family, who were still watching the fight, moved and sat with Naruto to get some information on Ace. W what is this power? It's totally intimidating asked Minato. This is called Super Saiyan. Remember when Ace said his blood and DNA were changed? Well his blood and DNA were replaced with Saiyan blood and DNA and it allowed him to transform into this, explained Naruto. Ashina just nodded because she was just didn't want to take her eyes away from her baby boy. Even though he was an adult and they weren't related by blood and bond anymore. Naruko and Mito just watched the fight in shock. Ace jumped back and fired multiple blasts which hit the villain, and then Renegade disappeared and then reappeared behind Ace, but Ace saw this and elbowed him in the face. Renegade shouted in pain and clutched his face and fell to the ground. Ace then saw that this was going nowhere. This fight won't end like this I need to transform to Super Saiyan 2 thought Ace. Ace then jumped back as Renegade stood back up with a now broken nose and was glaring at Ace. Ace smirked as he saw this. You know this fight has been boring so I'm just going to go all out shouted Ace. Renegade's eyes widened. This wasn't his full power. He then saw Ace get into a stance and concentrate his power, while the ground was shaking a lot from the immense power. Hi ah! Shouted Ace as he finished transforming. Like before his hair was standing up and now his hair looked like Ajeda's hair from Dragon Ball. 
Ace smirked at the frightened look and cupped his hands and fired a small Kai blast that hit Renegade in the face. Renegade flew back and but was caught by the throat. He stared down as Ace held his throat. Renegade then fired eye beams, but Ace saw this and flew back. That was close I got to be more careful thought Ace. Renegade then began to sweat as he thought he might die. This isn't happening. It can't be happening. How can some low-life scum be actually beating me in a fight? Well, if I can't take him down then thought Renegade as he looked to the Z Fighters plus Naruto and his family. Renegade then flew towards the men prepared a Kai blast to kill them. The Namikazes, minus Naruto, closed their eyes in fright that they might die, while the others smirked. The Namikazes opened their eyes when a shadow appeared over them, and they saw Ace standing there with his back to them. Ace noticed how ironic this was. When he was just a kid he was weaker than the men hated the Namikazes. Now he was protecting them from Renegade. Don't get him wrong. He still hates them for ruining his childhood, but letting them get killed would make him worse than the bad guys and he didn't want that. Ace then held out a hand and a Rasengan formed, which still shocked the Namikazes, and then cupped his hands like a Kamehameha, and the sphere turned green. Ace then vanished using instant transmission and reappeared behind Renegade who turned around in shock. Ace then fired the blast and completely destroyed Renegade. Spiral destruction wave. Max power. Shouted Ace as he finished and dropped to the ground, but Gohin caught his father. Gohin set Ace down, and Naruto came over to them with a blue-haired woman that Ace didn't know. Ace looked over to Naruto confused, and Naruto saw this and connected the dots. I'm sorry I forgot you don't know her. This is my wife, Hinata, Naruto introduced. Hello, said Hinata. Ace's jaw dropped but then smiled. Ace didn't ever think his brother would get a wife. Ace, who was still sitting down, bowed his head. It's nice to meet you. Ace smiled when he raised his head so when am I going to be an uncle? Naruto and Hinata both sputtered and blushed, and the Z fighters laughed. The Namika's family was frowning because of the good moment. They wanted to be a part of it too. They wanted to fix their relationship with Ace, but no matter what he wouldn't let them fix it. Well, it's time to go, Ace said as he put two fingers to his head. But before he did it he had a shout. Wait. Shouted someone. Ace turned to look at the person who shouted and found that it was none other than Naruko. Brother. Wait please. We are sorry for everything and we mean it. Screamed Naruko please don't leave. I'll do anything. I I'll even be your wife because that's how much I love you. Ace frowned at the sudden confession. He then put the fingers to his head and disappeared with Gohin and the Z fighters. While Naruko dropped to her knees and cried. Minato and Kishina tried to comfort Naruko, and Mito glared at her a bit because she confessed before she could. Naruto and Hinata just watched in sadness. Naruko then stopped crying and looked to the heavens. I'll get you to marry me Ace. I love you and we are meant to be together. Thought Naruko. Scene change in time C-H-A-N-G. Six days have passed and the Cell games were here during this time. Kakina had went on a huge adventure by going to Namak and getting a new guardian. Apparently, she got a Namak named Den who was friends with Gohan and Krillin. Then she looked for the Dragon Balls and resurrected everyone who died by Renegade and his men. Limi was brought back with them and joined the Z Fighters. She took a liking to Krillin especially. What was awesome was that the dragon could make two wishes now. She also resurrected everyone Cell had killed because Cell had killed many people during the six days. Ace turned to Bulma, who was right behind him. Well, we're off. Said Ace. Please be careful and don't die, said Bulma. Ace kissed her on the forehead and nodded to her. Ace used instant transmission and stood right next to Vegeta, who smirked at him. Ace saw that a guy with black hair and a belt and a guy with a microphone had their jaws dropped and their eyes widened. Ace ignored them as they were weak and useless at this point. Cell smirked at him and Ace smirked back. The other two noticed and wondered who this guy was to get Cell's attention. The guy with the mic came up to him. So who are you and what are you doing here? And if you come to watch then please step back. Said the guy. Vegeta growled, but Ace stopped her before she could say anything. My name is Ishiyama Ace and I came here to fight. Said Ace. The announcer's eyes widened as he figured this guy was the former world champion of martial arts. You're the former world champion it's nice to meet you, and why haven't you been in the last tournaments? Asked the announcer. The guy with the belt and white cape growled as the attention was moved from him. There was no challenges for me at the tournament so I didn't go back, explained Ace. The announcer nodded and turned to the guy with the champion belt. Mr. Hercule Satan how do you feel having another champion here with us? Asked the announcer. Hercule smirked. I could probably beat him, he should just leave it to the real martial artist smirked Hercule as he tried to intimidate Ace. Ace smirked back. Try it then champ, see how far you get against me, taunted Ace. Hercule growled and turned away, but before anything else could be said the rest of the Z fighters and Android 16 showed up. They landed beside Ace. 
Gohan turned to Ace. Father, you could have waited for us to get here. Complained Gohan. Ace rubbed the back of his head and looked down sheepishly. Sorry about that Gohan, said Ace. Welcome everyone, greeted Cell. Android 16 walked up to the others and smiled at Krillin. Hey, 16. You're back. Greeted Krillin. Yes and thank you because of you help I'm finally fully functional again, 16 smiled. Ace stepped up and held a hand out in greeting. My name is Ace, it's nice to meet you friend. Ace greeted. 16 dropped his smile. I know who you and Gakina are, I was designed to destroy you both. Although I highly doubt I can do that now, explained 16. Ace just stepped back and frowned. Why the hell was this guy being so rude? Ace then stepped up into the ring. Okay, him first guys. Ace stepped up. You don't have to fight first you know, father explained Trunks. Ace turned to Vegeta and Gakina. What do you say Gakina? Vegeta. Asked Ace. Go ahead, smirked Vegeta. Yay, you can go first, said Gakina. Ace stepped up but was stopped by Hercule. Hey don't you know him the champ around here, the martial arts champion said. Ace glared at the man for his stupidity. I've had about enough of you clowns and your stupid jokes, now clear out of here before I get angry, said Hercule. Get out of here idiot, said Krillin. Hercule looked shocked and then smirked. Sorry I forgot, you idiots probably don't know that I'm the martial arts champion because you're live your life doing nothing, said Hercule. Ace glared at him even more, then walked up to Hercule and slapped him. Hercule just flew a few feet back and landed on the ground and held a hand to his cheek in shock. The announcer ran over to Hercule to see if he was okay. Stand back before you get yourself killed idiot, spat Ace. Cell turned to face Ace, and they both smirked at each other. It's time, said Cell. Let's do this. A said confidently. That's it for today guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do please consider like share and subscribe. Also don't forget to check it out other video on channel. Thanks for watching guys take care.